Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Desmond Ritter, preseason week two, 2023. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. It is a great way to support the channel and get even more Quarterback School content. So if you're looking for even more content, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, let's take a peek at Desmond Ritter preseason week two, 2023. We're going to get a little naked keeper going down here to the bottom of the screen. Hit the big guy coming across on a shallow. Now, the ball's not perfect, but man, they've got some dudes on the perimeter. Make this catch look easy from the tight end position. Just continue to get interesting ways to get these guys the ball. Now, I think Desmond Ritter moves pretty well. I think this throw is probably not exactly where he wants. But that is a hell of a catch. I mean, nothing easy about that. Boop. Again, getting out, moving the launch point in the preseason, always a good idea. Finding different ways to be able to get dudes like this touches in space. Now, I will say that the design here is a little unique. And what I mean by that is oftentimes in these naked keeper things, you're going to get somebody in the flat. Okay, so that, that's kind of the, the gist of this. And I feel like I draw this up every video. Someone on the over, and then someone running deep, either on a corner or a post. So that's the kind of three levels of this thing. Now, normally, I think the last couple of years in the league, the easy way to do this for most people has been behind on what I'm used to calling a hide or sneak flat. This time, they decided to run pits essentially on a, on a super shallow. So you're coming across here as fast as you can. You got to show up really quickly. The problem with this, really, there's two problems with both of those plays, whether you go behind the line of scrimmage or in front, is behind the line of scrimmage, potentially, you can get knocked off by your own guys. So if the offensive line gets knocked back, sometimes you can make this thing, this thing then becomes like you got to run like around a mountain to get over there into the flat. It can take forever. I personally think that's easier than asking a guy to do this, which is really relying on the defense to not jack you up as you come across here. I mean, you could potentially get – these guys all think that it's a run, so they're going to come in here and try to engage and destroy blocks. So anything that flashes, they could potentially get knocked off here. So knocked off, knocked off, and you got to show up there really quick. So it's just a different way to do it. It will be interesting to see how they use these guys, these big, long creatures, to be able to go out there and make big plays on the perimeter. I mean, that's a hell of a catch. Look at all that space as well. I mean, there's so much space in the flat. Nice catch. Big play to get going. Feel good about getting a completion early. You know, got to get into some sort of a rhythm. A, a decent day, 7 for 9 for 80, but hardly, you know, precise with some of these things. Again, check out the right tackle. Love a little backside cut. Whoop. Nice catch. Get it going. Next one here, third and 12. Really nice job up top, giving your guy a shot, a little back shoulder, high point. That's a hell of a catch. Again, these big dudes are always open. He's a helmet taller than the corner. So just finding the creativity and the trust to be able to just give your guy a shot. Again, not the greatest camera work in the world here from the back, but that's a hell of a catch staying in bounds. Third and 12, there are no good options in the NFL. Really rare. So you catch the one-on-one -on -one that you want outside the numbers up top. Let it rip. Again, I love his base. Watch, check out his base here. Lined up to the left. Boom. That's perfect. Again, the decision to go back shoulder is that you've got the wide receiver who has not passed the corner. So he's passed him. He's underneath him. And you've got the corner over the top. So if it was inverted, if the wide receiver had gapped the corner and he was right here, then you'd want to throw this thing kind of down the line. But because he's behind him, you then want to throw this thing right at him, which oftentimes is called the back shoulder. So you just throw it high back here, and I'll, you want this relationship to essentially stay the same so that he's right here, the corner doesn't get his head around, can't make a play on the ball, and you can really put this thing anywhere you want from like the waist up in a catchable radius. And you just throw it right at the ear hole. It's just a really nice job from Desmond Ritter giving his guy a shot. And it's the league, man. There are freaks out there on the perimeter, and the Falcons have a few. 
Whoop. Hell of a catch. Third and 12. The third down conversions are really nice here, man. Super efficient, precise. Again, I really like the footwork. I love the matchup. I love letting it rip on time. I mean, look at the pass, bro. There's no one around him. The ball comes out really quickly. Super decisive. Big play. First down. Another third down. This time, third and five. Ball's in the 11. We're going to scramble. Nothing there. I really like this design. We'll talk through it. Just go get it yourself. No hit. Run out of bounds. Again, first downs inside the red zone at a premium. Holy moly. Got to get a new set of downs here. Nothing there. Don't force it. Potentially could have got there on what I'm going to call an iteration of mesh. Okay, now don't come at me sideways, cert peeps. But this to me is a version of mesh I've always wanted to see. And what it is, so I can already hear the truthers out there saying that this is not true mesh. But to me, this is true mesh. So this is mesh. Come out here, they like, whatever they call it, circle the loop or find the grass, whatever, I don't care. Right here, it's paired with rail. So this thing, oftentimes people will say this is called railroad, where this guy will come up here and run the deep hook. Where to me, by no means a purist, not certified, I don't love having multiple fast guys run glorified checkdowns. It's just not for me. I've always thought a cool way to do it would be to do exactly what they do here. You get the benefits of mesh. So you get this rub element that they're trying to get where you get this underneath guy going as the number two. So really, oftentimes this is read out as one to the rail. So this is one and this is two. And then on the back side, you can sometimes have like an alert, whatever. If you like this, throw it corner out, whatever. Doesn't really matter. This is the play, the rail to the shallow. And then sometimes there's a, a hook player right here. A deep hook is kind of the number three. Well, instead of wasting this second, the over-the-top mesh with another check down over here, let's run him as like a rub hook. Woo! Me likes. So come up here, rub it, let the guy go underneath as the number two, and then take the rub instead of running another check down, go run that hook. And y'all, I think it's there. This is nice. This is, uh, to me, this is innovation. I haven't seen this anywhere else. This is uh, the bleeding edge of the meshy game. Look at it. Woo! <laughs> this is why y'all are here. Now, I probably wouldn't have run my beast hybrid tight end guy on a whatever the hell motion thing this is. That doesn't look right. <laughs> but really, now you've taken mesh and made it mesh railroad three-person concept. That's pretty sweet. Gone from a four-person to a three-person, so you could have, you know, pits out on the other side running whatever you want. Again, look at how it times out with London right over the ball. So no, boom, throw it to him. Now, I know he's got to go up and out, but right there, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty nice. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a lot of other people in the league running that this week. So that is halftime. If you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let it wash over you. It is an easy way to support the channel. That means a lot to me. So thank you for doing that. Get the notifications. I appreciate it. We already talked about the quarterback school Patreon community. Again, if you love the channel, looking to support it another way, want even more quarterback school content, hop over to the quarterback school Patreon community. I appreciate it. We also have quarterback school courses. This is the most in-depth content available on the channel. So if you dig the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the quarterback school courses. The links are in the video description. We have in-depth courses on RPOs, pass protection, tempo, how to beat every single coverage, we even have an entire offensive system. So if you're interested in any of those courses, check out the links in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out all those free resources in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, nice little, we'll call it a slant-ish to the slot up top. Tight coverage, balls right up on his face. It's a good throw. You know, I, th I think this is a throw you expect an NFL quarterback to make. Tight window, but it's right on him. Again, a lot of <laughs> chuckling by myself because a lot of Trey Lance peeps were all sensey because I didn't put every single completion out there. These are throws that I think you sh are expected to make in the league. The leverage is the correct leverage. The ball's right up on him. It's tight coverage. I get it. 
Now, I will say that to me, this play probably should be better, I would imagine, than how it comes out. And what I mean by that is if we're getting middle field closed, man, you'll often hear me say divider rolls on this channel and expect outside leverage here. Outside leverage here. So that means that these slot, these interior players, whether they're the two or the three, so the two, the three, the two here, should all essentially have inside leverage if they were split out. If this guy was out here, he would have outside leverage, most likely, by many teams. Now that's not every call in man, but most teams. So that if you were to come up here and run this route, you would think you have good leverage the whole time. Well, in reality, on this play, the, the nickel player is inside. And we kind of have to like throw him off of us to then cross face to get in there. And again, why you have outside leverage is because you have this middle field player, post player who's there to kind of as the funnel where you're trying to push all those interior players. Footwork wise here from the quarterback from Ritter, I think this is, you know, I think he's proven that he's got really polished in pocket mechanics. I really like this. This to me is like a timestamp saying dude is polished. You can tell to me he's got Jordan Palmer's fingerprints all over him. Boom. Nice base right up on him. Outstanding. Again, from the back, you can really see kind of the footwork element of it. You know, it's almost, it's so polished that it's almost rigid or like robot-like, but it's super repeatable. Boom. Nice little pocket movement. Guy around him. And then look at the ball location. Boop. Right up on his grill. Last one here. This is a tough one. Interception. You know, I think we're just a little bit off on our ball location here. The DB is definitely early as well. That being said, you would hate to see this type of thing happen in a meaningful situation. It's preseason. Don't freak out. The fact that there's one pick. For me here, there's a few things to like. The first thing to like is Desmond Ritter is a football player. Look at him. Go get this tackle. Near hip. Boom. Chop him down. Love it. Art fired up. From the back here, there's a few things with this route. Okay, so the I'm going to call this a loop or return. I have no idea what they call it. But you're essentially trying to sell this flat, and then you're coming back. Now, the thing about this thing is that every team runs it a little different. A little different. So I prefer to hit this thing flat and come back flat. A lot of teams, a lot of really good coaches I know, prefer to have it more upfield. There are benefits to both. The upfield means you're going to kind of fall into the end zone here. You get a chance to go towards the end zone, all things that I normally like. The part about coming out flat that I like is you stay away from the near defender. So when we go over the top here, and the read is usually, what is this guy doing? If he goes over the top here, this guy's getting the ball. Now, if you catch it and score, that's great. If you catch it and stay away from him, it can potentially get into the end zone here. So just little things about how you come out of this. And trust me when I say that they have it planned out. It's not like, oh, if you want, you can come out this way, or if you want, you can come out this way. We need to know quarterback-wise which one it is. I think Desmond Ritter doesn't put the ball where he wants here. He puts it on like the back shoulder, and this thing is designed to be more up the field here. Now, this is one of those throws where in a perfect world, it's what I call a second base throw, like you're a catcher throwing down the second base. You want that thing right at the base, so kind of low and protect your wide receiver and kind of get into the end zone. So that's <laughs> that's a fancy way of me saying he doesn't put it exactly where he wants. Ah, back. You can see he had kind of on that back shoulder. Now, the DB is there early, okay? That's contact. He's all over him. It's a pick. It's a bummer. But the ball is not exactly where he wants either. So just a little detail off. Ends up in a disaster. But that's a hell of a tackle, y'all. That's a hell of a tackle. Again, I think he could maybe be lined up to where he's trying to go with the ball here a little bit better as well. You know, he's lined up to the left, but he's not lined up to the target. So when he goes to the left to me, he's stepping. He's opening that front door. He's leaning to the left. The ball is going to go to the left. He's falling off to the left. But dude's a football player too. Boom. Chop him down. So that is a wrap. Desmond Ritter, preseason. I think that there was a lot to like. Was it perfect? Was he totally precise with his ball location? No. Were there really nice throws, specifically and throws and decisions on third down? I thought there were, man. There, they've got some dudes on the perimeter that I think are fun to watch that are a little bit under the radar, at least in my world. 
but I love the fact that they give them opportunities to make plays down the field. Desmond Ritter looks really kind of efficient and decisive from within the pocket. Now it's just about polishing those things up, making sure that we're on the exact same page because you can see how one little mistake, not being on the same page in the red zone, can all of a sudden turn into a disaster dumpster fire that you would hate to see happen in a really meaningful situation during the regular season. Regardless, lots to like. I'm intrigued by the Falcons this year. We'll see what it looks like, but I think that they're kind of fun to watch offensively with the weapons they have and kind of the front edge uh I don't know about innovation, but just kind of pushing certain concepts forward and how they do certain things that might be a little different than other people across the league. So either way, thank you for hanging to the end. I appreciate you watching the video, supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. So I will see you next time. Have a good one.